Let's go live to our reporter, Jonathan Lee in Canberra. Jonathan, how did the numbers at this year's service compare? Yeah, Gab, good afternoon. The numbers are down as you'd come to expect. The anthems are currently playing. We've got Australia's now, New Zealand's just before. Around 4,000 people here at the War Memorial. It's been a ticketed event, but when we looked around the crowd a little bit earlier, there were still a, a number of empty seats, really, a number of the veterans also sitting in the perimeter. They were paying their respects. We had, uh, we didn't have the usual march. We normally have what's called the Veterans Parade. Uh, today, they just had a banner parade instead. So up to 200 people participated in that. But members of the public, those who couldn't get tickets today have turned out, they've stood uh, on the embankments around here. I guess a number of them wouldn't even realise there were actually restrictions uh, in terms of how many people were allowed. It's sort of something which uh, caught up with a number of people, I really think. But uh, it was still equally powerful, equally poignant. Uh, there was a famous historic uh, quote from uh, Mustafa Ataturk, who was the general at the time of Turkey's military that saw off wave upon wave of Anzac attack and Anzac Cove at Gallipoli. Uh, he talked about the fact that Australians and those from New Zealand now rest in the bosom of Turkey's care and can forever, or we can forever rest assured that they will be taken care of. Uh, uh, the chief of our uh, Air Force, Mel Hupfield, also spoke and he talked uh, powerfully about the fact that names might be inscribed in memorials, memorials all over the world, but we still uh, must need, we must keep their, their memory in our hearts and we must always remember to, uh, to pay, the, uh, pay the ultimate respect that we can for their legacy. Let's have a listen. The beautiful mar marble monuments that we chisel will eventually erode. The grand iron statues that we cast will eventually rust. So let us carve them from our stories. Let them live eternal in our collective memory. These are the people and the stories of our nation, lest we forget. Yeah, Gab, it's, it's often hard to convey the emotion, the empathy and the respect in times like this under a, you know, a sun-drenched sky. So many people turn out, their hearts are so full of sadness. Uh, paying the respects, this will also be a, a very different ceremony next year. There's a, a controversial upgrade taking place here at the memorial. So for two years, this will go somewhere else in the grounds. Uh, it will come back and it will be a, a markedly different uh, front area to the War Memorial when we next have our, our service here. We're also about to have a flyover of some description. So you've probably come at the, uh, at the poignant time as we pay our final respects. And we also remember, it should be said that 106 years ago we might have landed at Gallipoli, but this will be remembered as the, the first uh, commemoration that we've had since the government has announced that we're going to have that Royal Commission into Veterans and Service Personnel Suicide. So a number of people are thinking about that today and what it means going forward, especially with our diggers now finally coming home from Afghanistan. Gab. Yeah.